big ups to all my YouTube subscribers, all 12 of you. Besides a couple of the scam accounts, I think a couple of those accounts are scammed, so the remaining 10, big ups to you. Today's episode is about making recipes. And I think making recipes is the most creative part of, of making a beer. I'm just going to take you through my process. So, to make a recipe, you've got to start, like, you've got to think in your head. You've got to imagine this beer. And the beer I'm imagining at the moment is a big beer. It's, it's, a, it's a solid beer. It's at least 6% alcohol. It's, um, it's got, it's still, it's not too malty. It's got a nice, clear, kind of crisp feeling to it and a whack of bitterness. I think it's got to have 60 IBUs. So that's like a really bitter beer. I want a bitter beer. I want one that's 60, 60 IBUs, but I want it to punch with fruity citrus flavors. I want it to be really floral citrus and it must just, it must just hit hard. So yeah, so first thing is water. I've got my, my Newland Spring water. I've got about, uh, let's say maybe 50 liters of Newland Spring water. Newland Spring water is like the backbone of the beer. It's going to make sure that there's no funky flavors, that it's crisp, clean, pure, beautiful. Just got that real clear background with no iron or chlorine or any of those weird kind of flavors in the back. So that's part one. Part two is the malt. I haven't decided on the malt yet. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. With yeast, obviously I bitch and moan about this yeast a lot, which is the USO5. USO5 yeast. I don't know enough about yeast, or I haven't actually come across the yeast which can give me such clean hops and crispness in, a, in an IPA. Obviously it's going to be an IPA. So I'm going to stick with USO5 until I learn more about yeast. I mean there's so many Y yeast strains which we don't really get in this country which I could use, but for now this is pretty much the standard for IPAs in this country. And then hops. So hops, I've got a whole bunch of Yakima Chef hops. I've got Citra, Simcoe, Amarillo, and Centennial. And if I go through these, um, the highest alpha is my Simcoe. So I'm actually going to use Simcoe for bittering. I'm going to do a little bit of these kind of at the, maybe at the 10 minute mark, at the 10 minute. So I'll, I might be throwing most of the Simcoe. I'll do a little touch of everything at the 10 minute mark, and then everything except for about 20% will go into the Whirlpool. Like when the whirlpool's really hot, and I'll just keep that whirlpool like pretty hot for about 10 minutes, and then finish it off. I'll just put whatever's left into the dry hop. Like as I'm shaking it, as I'm getting the oxygen in, I'll throw in that, and that should just give me a hop bomb, hop explosion. That's what I want. I want all these citrusy flavors of these kind of hops to to go in there. Um, yeah, and I want a lot of bitterness as well. So I want a bitter big beer with this crazy hops. Now with malt, I don't want to, now this is going to be quite interesting, yeah, so this is an idea I had. So I've obviously got pale ale malt, every beer I make, or most of them, IPAs, it's just a lot of pale ale malt. I mean, it's pure and it's beautiful. The next thing is caracle. So this is also sometimes called carapulse. It's, it's basically a um, caramel malt, but it's, it's renowned, or if you go on, um, I love seeing this, the beer, uh, kind of the beer forums talking about these kind of malts because they say it adds no flavor. And every time I see that, I say, what bullshit? Because this malt absolutely has my favorites, absolute favorites, aroma and feel. So it's normally used for head retention. Um, but if you smell this, the smell is the sweet. Ah, it's just creamy, beautiful malt. So I'm going to bomb the entire 500 grams into this beer, which is going to be quite unusual. Um, and then I've got, I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything else. I might put some Munich Light. What I normally do if I'm, if I'm doing a recipe is I'll take, I'll take various different um, malts and then I'll, I'll smell them. And whatever the smell is like, then that's what you think about. Here I've got some torrified wheat, which is basically wheat with a bit of acid. And I don't, I don't necessarily want to put that. It's, it smells a bit insipid. Um, I've got, yeah, I've got every kind of malt you can imagine here. But I'm going pretty simple for this. There's some wheat. Now wheat, I'm thinking about throwing in some wheat. 
because wheat will give me a little bit of haze. I mean, it doesn't have much flavor. It's, it's pretty neutral. And what I do want is I want as many particles in the beer as possible. I want it to be as hazy and as much matter, as much raw organic matter in the beer as possible so that I can, so that the hops have something to hang on to. So that all those little hop esters and things have something to ha hang on to. I've got some melano, melanoidin, similar to the caraclea, but I've got enough there. And a little bit of wheat. I mean, sorry, it's a little bit of oats. I might just throw some oats in there. It's, it's got like that torrified wheat. It's got a little bit of like, kind of like a insipid smell. I'm going to look, see if I can find even jungle oats. Maybe just throw a little bit in there just to give a little bit of, um, a little bit of, of haze, a little bit of material for the hops to really hang on to. So it's, not necessarily going to be a clear beer uh, for the first, you know, for the first week that I'm drinking it or so. Now, something really exciting. So I had, when I was dreaming of this beer, I thought, you know, I'm so used to drinking these beers, but what if there was a little something at the back of the beer that just, like, just gave you a little something. So I'm going to put the tiniest amount, 10 grams maybe, of this smoked malt. So this is smoked malt, which is smoked over a... Um, I think over some beach or something like that. Oh, and you get that like smoky barbecue flavor. But too much of this would make your beer disgusting. It would make it taste like um, like bacon or something. So I'm gonna just put in the tiniest pinch. Five grams, maybe 10 grams, something like that. Such a small amount that if you can even detect it, it'll be interesting. But yeah, that's it. That's my recipe for the day. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see how this turns out.